Good afternoon. I'm Varun Gupta, VP of Engineering at Salesforce, and with me, I have Tuheen Kanti Sharma, a lead engineer in our team. Today, we'll be sharing with you how we use gRPC and a set of Salesforce open source libraries to implement interoperability with a set of polyglot clients for one of the services on our platform. There are two types of business apps users ones who have used Salesforce and ones who will use Salesforce. So please remember any purchase decision should solely be based on currently available products and services. Thank you all for joining us today and giving us an opportunity to share our implementation with you. And a big thanks to the organizers of the gRPC conference for enabling us in these special times to bring a representation to you in this virtualized forum. Before we jump into the cool stuff, a bit about myself. I've been very lucky to be with Salesforce for 10 plus years and have had opportunities to learn from the best. I've always considered myself to be a learner, whether it is engineering or other things in life. There is something you can learn every day. My current learning journey outside of work has been piano and music theory, and I have been surprised on how closely it relates to engineering. I love moderately risky sports. Uh, I've been a licensed private pilot for 10 plus years, and I don't even remember the, the first time I took a motorcycle out. What I do remember is that it was well before I drove a car. I also got into sailing some years ago, but had to hit a pause on that after my son was born. He's five now, so I'm just waiting for him to get to the age so that he can crew and I can then relax while he does the hard work when we go sailing. Now that you know a bit about me, let me share something about Salesforce. At Salesforce, we are driven by a set of values. Trust, customer success, innovation, and equality are our four core values. And the value I want to focus on today is that of innovation. Salesforce has been repeatedly recognized as a leader in innovation. And my team and I have had the opportunity to innovate infrastructure to allow rest of Salesforce to deliver their innovations faster to our customers. We provide a simple, and repeatable platform that delivers environments to Salesforce engineers for development, test, and production. The platform is extensible, scalable, and evolves to meet the needs of current and future instantiations across multiple substrates. Salesforce services are interconnected so as to allow our users to have a 360 view of their customers. Developers building these services need a way to set up their environments with a combination of these services to build and test their integrations. And that is when they use our environments platform. They use the platform to set up a combination of these services while building and validating their integrations in various representative environments. The environment platform allows users to request a set of services with customized versions to be set up for validating integrations. And one of the most critical aspect of setting up the environment is ensuring that the version of the service deployed will be functional and compatible with versions of other services being deployed. And we achieve this through the last known good artifact service. The last known good artifact service validates service versions to identify which version of an artifact can be used so to set up the service successfully in a representative environment. It uses an array of deployment clusters to simulate a set of configurations and validate which internal versions of various services can work coherently together. And that information is then consumed by multiple polyglot clients and used for our environment setup. These clients implemented in various different programming languages could exist across several different substrates and need to interact with the last known good artifact service in a seamless manner. 
And to achieve that high degree of interoperability, we adopted gRPC as our framework of choice for this implementation. Do you remember the last time you went to a team for adopting a new version of your service? And likely they could only commit to next release if you were lucky, or maybe you bribed them with resources to cover their on-call support for a month. It probably wasn't a surprise if the answer was that they will be able to, to consume it sometime next year. Well, using gRPC, we were able to develop idiomatic client and service stubs that allowed us to enhance our service dynamically without having to ask our clients to update their implementation. With native MTLS integration, it provided us capability to build a secure and authenticated communication setup. And we were able to achieve a high degree of consistency and reliability through features like speculative retries, as well as achieve low latency for our requests and responses. And of course, the power of open source allowed us to tap into collective community enhancements at a much faster pace than what we have achieved, to what we could have achieved ourselves. Let me now invite to Heen to walk you through the architecture of the service and some of the implementation details. Thanks, Varun. Um, so I'll introduce myself. Uh, I've been at Salesforce for more than seven years and I've experienced its rapid pace of innovation. In addition to all the great stuff we build, I've been fortunate to find time to do my favorite activities I'm a passionate skier in the winters, try to go there almost every weekend, uh, love to bike in the summers and try to be try to hike whenever else I get time. I also love sports and I love to play soccer. I really find great satisfaction in one of our Salesforce's course values and the which is of giving back to the community. It has provided me immense opportunities to volunteer in my community and outside. This was about me. Uh, let's learn a little bit about our service. Let's dive deep into the service architecture. And we'll walk from left to right. You would, you would notice that our service depends on a set of a deployment cluster to find the last known good artifact service. It has a set of consumers on the same substrate, which uh, are in Python. It has a set of consumers in a different substrate, which is in Java. So you see that there are clients in different languages in Python and Java, and they're also in different substrates. We see that these polyglot clients uh, uh, would work really well if we had a consistent way of communicating with them. And there's where gRPC and Protobuf helps us in creating a language neutral solution. Let's look at the Protobuf message. So, we, so the Protobuf message consists of two parts. Uh, one part is the message, the other part is the service definition. Uh, while walking through this uh, message and, and the subsequent implementations, I, we're going to walk through the life cycle of the last known good service. You would notice this message is strongly typed. It has like string uh, formatted uh, fields and it is language agnostic. This is not a specific language and it enables us to generate clients in any supported language. Now, you, now I want to talk about the forwards and backwards compatibility. Uh, so if you would see uh, that if we introduce a new field and uh, click please, you will see that there is, uh, we, we just introduced a new field uh, release and this does not break clients. The clients which were using the earlier version of the service continue to ignore this field. And now we can have the new clients which can now start consuming this new field. This enables us to have to ship versions without breaking clients. Existing client uh, and this helps us in, in having a consistent experience for our customers. Since we now looked at the protobuf format, let's look at the service definition. You would notice in the service definition that it's again uh, language agnostic. It is talking about uh, uh, and, and strongly typed. It's just talking about the service methods. It has return types in stream. And 
gRPC enables us to have a very simple marshalling protocol. It helps us enable streaming, which gives us better availability and works with well with MTLS authentication. So we get authentication and encryption. The proof, the proof of part of the service is complete as we talked about the message and now we talked about the service. Now let's look at a sample implementation in Java. And here's where we would like to introduce a couple of Salesforce open source libraries, which is which helps us to write uh, uh, Spring Boot integrations in gRPC. Let's look at one of them. And that's the gRPC Spring. People who are familiar with Spring Boot know that a service definition is annotated with at the service annotation, which make, marks this being this service definition as a, a service to the Spring framework. Similarly, with the gRPC Spring library, we can now annotate with at a gRPC service, and it provides us the same semantics as a Spring service. The rest of the service definition emulates a, a archetype Spring service, and we can continue to develop on the very familiar way we, we are used to. Now that we have defined the service, let's look at how we can stream a response. We will be talking about the unary streaming here. Uh, there is bidirectional streaming too. We, we used unary streaming. In this code file fragment, find enable configurations will stream its response. As you will notice that there's a return type, but instead we use the stream. There isn't a return type. Uh, I beg your pardon. And instead, we use the stream observer as one of the method parameters. This response observer on next starts streaming the response, and on completed, you're notified that the RPC is complete. Streaming enables the service to stream response elements as they become available, and is a much more efficient way than the traditional request wait response, which could cause us several timeouts. Bidirectional streaming further enhances this by having even the client stream request elements and uh, and the server stream response elements so it becomes a bi-directional communication streaming helps improve availability but we can still do better and that can be done using reactive grpc and here is where we would like to talk about another uh, of spring boot uh, salesforce's spring boot open source uh, libraries the reactive grpc uh, reactive ERPC further improves our availability by providing flow control. In addition to streaming, the flow control enables the clients and servers to implement back, back pressure. And I'll talk a bit about that. If there are very fast clients, they do not overwhelm the server. And if there's a very fast server, it doesn't overwhelm slow clients. So flow control is an additional benefit over availability, which enables fast and the fast servers in fast slow or any amount of speed clients and servers to communicate with each other we demonstrate that uh, flux as a return type here and uh, flux again isn't like a country return type it's very similar to stream observers it lets it's a publisher that can receive zero to n elements clients can subscribe to this flux flux uh, my, i beg your pardon and receive message elements as they become available now we've looked at the protobuf message. We've looked at the service definition part of it and the Java implementations. Let's look at the client stubs. Client stubs can be auto-generated from, from the protobuf message. The entire message you could use uh, uh, to generate the client stubs, which can then be used by a service for uh, with by the clients to communicate with the service. Let's look into how we generate that. In the, in the examples here, we're generating the client stubs in Java using the Protoc plugin and in Python uh, doing the same. This plugin accepts the dot protofile as input. Once we have generated these stubs, our clients can then start consuming it to talk to our service. Let's look at the two types of uh, stubs that are available to the clients uh, that we also use in an implementation. So there are two kinds of uh, communication paradigms, synchronous and asynchronous. And the Auto-generated stubs come in, in those flavors. They are generated in three types, but semantically there are uh, two kinds. One is for synchronous, and there are two kinds which are in asynchronous. I'm talk, going to talk about one, two of them, the blocking stub, which is the synchronous one, and the, as, and the asynchronous stub, which is the new stub in the second, uh, second uh, code fragment in the presentation. The blocking stub uh, preserves the same semantics. It lets you have the request wait response for format. So if there are clients which cannot function with streaming, they can continue to use that. The non-blocking async stub uses the great streaming features of the protocol and can let you have better availability. 
we have now looked at the server and client implementations. Now let's look at how we secure this service. And here's where the dynamic authentication service comes in handy. And let's talk about this. This service provides us short-lived certificates and automated provisioning. The certificates are also rotated uh, frequently. GRPC's native support for MTLS enables us to integrate easily with this service for both authentication and encryption on the wire. Now let's summarize this entire life cycle of the uh, service we talked about. So we talked about uh, the message format, the protobuf message format, which was language agnostic, which enabled us to do uh, code like language agnostic implementations for uh, Java and Python. We talked about the Salesforce open source Spring Boot libraries, which helped us do the gRPC service as well as the reactive gRPC service. We further looked at examples of how we could generate client stubs, which could be used by clients to communicate to a service. Uh, and we generated them in two languages, Java and Python. And then we finally demonstrated how to secure this service, how to secure this end-to-end -end communication uh, with MTLS. This is the life cycle of, my, uh, of our service. I would now like to invite Varun back to talk about our learnings through this journey in adopting gRPC. Thank you, Tuhin. So how do we, do we do in our adoption journey? Well, we had a smooth transition to adopt gRPC. We added service definitions for gRPC and our clients were able to consume the generated stubs. We were also able to serve clients across multiple substrates with the same instance of the service. And we were able to achieve a high degree of service reliability through reduced timeouts and seamless transitions to newer versions of our schema without breaking any existing clients. However, it was a new implementation, so adoption did not come for free. There was effort involved for our clients to switch to this implementation and we had to run two different implementations in parallel for a certain amount of time until everybody adopted it. But of course, there was that one consumer who was still complained after numerous reminders and a fairly long lead time uh, when we decom the old service. So we had to work with them one-on-one -on -one to finally migrate them to the new service as well. As a trailblazer of this technology and these libraries, we did not have many reference implementations. So we had to learn from our mistakes and go through a learning curve to get it right. We now hope that our sharing of some of these concepts and a basic introduction to these libraries will encourage you to try them and build your own implementations that you might be able to share for other users to benefit from. Thank you again, and we'll now open it up for questions.